We land at Manas International Airport. Remember that name, Manas. We'll come back to it later. We check into the very nice Hyatt Regency, probably not what I was expecting. There's a beautiful view out of the window. The city and the snow-covered mountains, the Altu Mountains are just 25 miles away. 80% of Kyrgyzstan is covered with mountains, earning it the nickname the Switzerland of Central Asia. The story of Bishkek starts in 1825, but we know that there's more to it than that. Nomadic tribes have hunted and grazed their livestock on this land for thousands of years. Kyrgyzstan is on the Silk Road, the major trade route from China to Europe from Roman times and probably before. We're going to the Burana Tower, about 50 miles from Bishkek, to understand what was going on here in the late 9th century. The tower was in the ancient city of Balasagan, the capital of the Karakhanid Khanate. The tower was originally 148 feet tall. An earthquake in the 15th century destroyed the top half of the structure, reducing it to 82 feet. All that remains of the city today are some earthworks, the remains of a castle, and three mausoleums. And there's a field of grave markers. These are called ball balls, the Turkic word for grandfather or ancestor. Also some petroglyphs of deer of unknown antiquity. The Mongols captured the city in 1218. The Kyrgyz traditionally hunt small game with golden eagles. Near the tower, an eagle hunter shows off his eagles. We enjoy the beautiful scenery as we drive back to Bishkek. We stop for lunch. This is palu, a kind of meat fried rice with a bread lid. Remember Manas from the airport? He's the hero of an epic Kyrgyz poem that has been a oral tradition for centuries. Back to the story of Bishkek. It starts in 1825 when the Kokans built a fort to control the caravan route and collect tribute from the Kyrgyz tribes. The Russians captured the fort in 1860 and established a Russian settlement. On our tour of Bishkek, we walk through monuments that mark the milestones in the story. This monument was erected in 1974 to mark the 100th anniversary of Kyrgyzstan's incorporation into the Russian Empire. This is Kermanjan Datka, the Queen of the South. In 1832, she married the feudal lord who ruled Ali in southern Kyrgyzstan. When he was murdered in 1862, she was recognized by the Khans of Burkhara and Kokan as the ruler of the Alai, something unprecedented. Politically astute, when the Russians annexed the area in 1876, she convinced her people to accept the Russian overlords. In any former communist city, you're guaranteed to find three things. Statues of fallen heroes of local origin, Stalinist modern buildings, and European art forms. Meet comrade Adarbakov, chairman of the Kyrgyz Revolutionary Committee of 1924-1925. He was a power in the SSR until his loyalty was questioned in the 1930s. He was executed, but he was rehabilitated in the 1950s post-Stalin. This monument honors the members of the local regiment of Red Guards who died in World War II. The Russians brought European theater, opera, and ballet with them. This is the Kyrgyz National Opera and Ballet Theater, built in 1955. There are several famous Kyrgyz ballet dancers, including Bazar Bf. This monumental building is the National History Museum and the White House built in 1985 as the Communist Central Committee headquarters. Today, it houses the parliament. It was the site of riots in 2005 and 2010. This monument honors the people killed during the Tulip Revolution of 2005 and the Second Revolution of 2010. Both started amid allegations of corruption, election fraud, and authoritarianism, and both resulted in regime change. 
we worked up an appetite with all that history. We're dining in a very large yurt with traditional Kyrgyz fare. We're entertained by a virtuoso quintet of musicians playing traditional Kyrgyz instruments. The next morning, on the way to the airport, we have one more stop, the Osh Bazaar. The stalls are filled with the usual, very fresh vegetable, some interesting prepared food, a wide selection of dried fruit and nuts, all kinds of spices, a large selection of grains, and there's some unusual things, like the traditional bread and pastries. The Kyrgyz have a sweet tooth. All kinds of honey, some with nuts or fruit. Something different, fried noodles in every variety of shape and color. And on the dark side, this is nazvi, or sucking tobacco. It is made of tobacco, oil, ash, and quicklime. It costs three times less than the cheapest pack of cigarettes and gives an immediate hit when placed under the tongue. And all kinds of sausage, except pork might take a little getting used to to buy milk in used water bottles. One reason our guide brought us to this particular bazaar is the selection of traditional clothing. Some things are universal. Use a cute kid to draw in the customers. We're off to another former Soviet Socialist Republic, Turkmenistan. We'll be landing at Ashbegat, the capital. 